right, so here we have Logan on the gray horse. He's never had us on him before. She has been messing around here. Let's see how good she's got things. All right, what's the first thing you do when you climb on? Ladder reflection. All right, let's see your ladder reflection. Okay, so some of this video, folks, will be um, some pitfalls, um, things to do better. So let go, Logan. So the one thing that you're not doing when you're when you're tromboning down, remember that the left hand would go way high and your right hand will go way down to the snap as far as you can go. Okay. And you go like four times and then you close your fingers, one, two, three, four, and your elbow starts to close and you stab yourself in the knee. Not grab the back of the saddle. All right, let's see you do it again. One, there you go. Two, three, four. Go to the horn with your other hand. Let's take a deeper, there you go. That's the right way to do lateral flexion. Just hang in there, push on the horn, look at the ground, you're going, there we go. Then, good job. Got soft and you let go. Both sides. You cannot do too much of this. Three, four, other horn to the hand, which pushes your butt back in the saddle. Perfect. That is lateral flexion, okay? So what you were doing was you weren't going down very far, right? And then again, you were getting to where you're running out of room with your hand, and it was coming way up high to try and get them to be soft. And then you tried to grab the back of the saddle. That's when you're moving, okay? So just one more time, lateral flexion each side. Good. Great job. All right, and then the other thing I want folks to see here is see when I make her reach down, when she's tromboning down, see her butt moving out of the saddle. So it kind of desensitizes the horse to where a lot of horses, if you do that, they're gonna start going forward, right? So just kind of desensitizes them, get your body moving around. Some people, you know, are a little bit tight up there and they don't ever relax. All right, so then, okay, now we got our head and neck to bend, which we're gonna need to operate the other parts of the body. Someday, we won't need them to flex like they do, but for now, we're gonna kinda need to knock him off stride to get him to step underneath on the indirect rein, moving the hips around, right? But we need our lateral flexion first. Now we have it, so let's just see you move the hips to your right. First of all, you get the neutral or the control rein. Three, four. Now we have a control rein. Things are soft. Now focus with your indirect rein. Focus at the hips. Focus, really look at them hips and push with your, with your foot. There you go, and let go, right? Remember about that horse stepping his nose in the horse trailer. Don't go slamming the door. So he did a little bit, let go. The release is what teaches, okay? Um, and um, what was I going to say there? Something else that was really good. But anyways, do the other side. One, two, three, four. Closes them fingers. One, two, three, four. Really focus on them. There you go. Now, that was what was good. See how her butt moves her pockets. She gets off her pockets to move the hindquarters. So in order for a horse to move his hindquarters, you have to shift his weight onto his front end. So some of horsemanship is called get in unison with your horse. So if he shifts his weight forward and he needs it shift forward to do, you shift your, that's why you get off your pockets. Because when we do the direct supporting rein, what are we going to do with our pockets? We're going to get back on our pockets because he gets, he shifts his weight to his back end so he can move his front end, right? Now remember folks, exaggerate to teach and refine as you go along. Yeah, someday we won't have our hands so wide and, and moving our pockets so much. But you know, it's like when we were in school, grade one, how big were the A, B's and C's at the front of the room? On the, the alphabet. They were huge, they were huge right? Because we're in grade one. And then as we got up the grades, you could barely see them anymore. They're small, right? They don't even have them there anymore, right? 
Exaggerate, teach, and refine as you go along. Okay, hips, again, both sides. Push on the saddle horn, deeper seat. Turn that pinky up. There you go, great job. He steps underneath. Other side. Pinky up. And he steps underneath. All right, that's past that test. So then the next one would be is like, and I just want to show you folks something here. Um, and first of all, let's show them the four phases with our foot. Remember how I said the first phase is really turn your toe out, right? And then see when she toe, turns her toe out, do you feel like your calf muscle has now got contact, yes. right? But if it's like this, turned in, it doesn't really have any contact, does it? No. So phase one is turning your toe out. And then if you really turn your toe up, then it, or turn your toe down, I'm start turning it down, but leave your foot on. Turn your toe down would be phase two. Phase three is now turn it down more. Now your heel's making contact. And then if you had a spur on, would be phase four and you'd roll that up the rib cage. Yeah, okay? That's the four phases with the foot, all right? So that being said, because this is a question for some people, it's like, why do you want them to step under with your hindquarters? All right, so here we go, folks. Here's a, here's a real defining moment in horse, horsemanship for you. These ribs right here make this soft, all right? So at first, we're stepping them hindquarters underneath, but we're also really getting this part soft. Someday, when we're just walking forward, and as I showed you before on the bay horse, when we want that arc in the circle, we don't step these under anymore, but because we push on the ribs, there we start getting just like that horse is starting to look at you just see just turn you push your toe down don't pull in the rein and look at them start to look see so that's what ha that's when they exaggerate teach and refine as you go along you, ropers need to control these in the box and they're going to need to step them underneath but barrel racer not so much and they might think oh well, you're stepping the hindquarters underneath he'll start flinging his ass around the barrels no he won't but we won't need to move them hindquarters near as much later on. Yeah, we might need to keep those hindquarters in behind his shoulders when we want to leave the alley, when they want to be an idiot, right? But point here being is that these here start to get soft, so you can use them to get this soft. And I hope I make that makes a lot of sense. So anyways, that's that. Let's go from... We're gonna, when we do this for our next move, if you'll see, when we move the hindquarters, there's gonna be a spot in here when he steps underneath that you're gonna really feel this clear and it's gonna make really e this real easy to step this way, right? So you're gonna feel that when you step them underneath when it's time to do the direct support, get back on your pockets and move the front end around. So let's give it a whirl. All three things you, you have to do first, a control rein, an indirect rein, then the direct support. Neutral, control, there you go. Now a direct support. And don't be scared to pull a little bit. That's good, good. And he stepped across, great job. And rub your horse, okay? See him licking his lips? He's like, I can do these moves. And this horse hasn't had this stuff done before, folks. All right, other side. It's already starting to give you his head. Steps underneath, direct support. Get back on your pockets, lean back. Kind of walks around the front a little bit there. So that could get a little bit better. And understanding while we're here that this direct rein here controls this foot and the supporting rein over there controls that foot, the outside foot. So you'll feel it. You're gonna knock them hindquarters out of the way and then you're gonna feel when you can sit back on your pockets and pull the front end through, okay? There's a control. 
control rein. Just gonna wait. Pinky up. And there's a nice direct rein, moves the four quarters through. Wasn't phenomenal, but pretty darn good. Percent a day, what do we got in 100 days, right? Other side. Now remember, pinky up on your indirect rein. She's just kind of going like this into her belly button. Pinky up. Okay. Goes through all the range. You gotta have softest first. Don't, don't go to the next one until the feet stopped. Now do the indirect. Moves the hind quarters. Now lean back and move the four quarters. Great job. All right, folks, there we go. There's She's operated all four corners of that horse, and I would have to think she got more than a percent better than it was before. So we get a percent a day. In 100 days, we get 100%. All right, so just for the heck of it, give me some other rain positions here. Simon says casual rain. Simon says a concentrated rain. Hang in there and wait. Good, let go. Perfect. Back to a casual. Okay. So Simon says a control rein. Okay. Give me a neutral rein. Simon says a casual rein. All right, give me a control rein on the left side, Simon says. All right, hang in there until I say different. Just look down at the ground, you're going nowhere. All right. Give me a concentrated ring, Simon says. Okay, so if you don't, and remember that you can, when you feel him go to back up, really turn your toes out and push him into the bridle so he doesn't go back, all right? One more time. Hey, Simon says. Simon says, give me a concentrated ring. Squeeze with them feet. Great job. All right. Nice job today. All right. Thank you.